Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus, and today I'm gonna start the match at the end of round one, which is a bit unfortunate because my recording button was off. I was cleaning my laptop earlier today, so I must have messed around with the buttons a little bit too much, but today I'm playing with the Houndmaster WB comp, so this is basically a world domination team, except I have the small doggy here instead of having a crusader, because no one likes a crusader, everyone wants to be like the, the small doggy and the big doggy, they're, they're the good looking characters. So in terms of how this team is different, the doggy is going to be feeling much of a different role from the Crusader. Crusader just does stun control, it's pretty much what he's there to do. This doggy is going to be able to mark, he's going to be able to guard, he's going to be able to use the Hound's area for finishers, and he's also going to be able to keep, him help, uh, keep himself relatively safe with the Lick Wounds and also the decent amount of dodge he has using the Monkey's Paw. So he's mostly here just to mark and also have the Harry. That's uh, mostly what we want on the offense here. So I don't have any battle debuffs on me. The, the way the first round went was basically my opponent, I think, went first. Actually, I can't remember to well, but okay, that's not a crit. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I was hoping for a crit sniper shot there, but I can't actually remember who went first. It must have been my opponent. Yeah, it must have been my opponent. And I think their first move was maybe something with the occultist. I, I can't, I generally can't remember. What the hell did they do? I generally can't remember, but okay, they did something, let's just leave it at that, they did something, and after that I went to a crit slam on this flagellant, and he's just been knocked back, and I've been just trying to mark my opponent's characters, but they've carefully used their Arbalest turn to, to make it so I haven't really been able to... I to just mark someone take lots of advantage from it. Thankfully though, this Arbalest doesn't have Bola, so I might be able to abuse that if I, if I really try it. Uh, now, there is a bit of a problem here, which is the fact that my opponent has uh, has the Arbol's Flare, which is a really, really strong move. They can flare right now, but they'll only flare the Dazes and the Mark, and I can't really take advantage of the Mark at the moment, so a flare right now really wouldn't do all that much, so I highly doubt my opponent's gonna go for it. The reason I want to go for this pull is because having the... Uh, the occult is in position 1 means he can't do his best moves, and also means that the abomination can never transform slam because the flashlight will go out of position, so that's obviously something I want here. Now, sadly I don't have the stun, I would maybe go for a stun the abomination, maybe, probably not though. I think what I have to do here, it looks odd, I will admit it, ooh, sniper shot by the way, <laughs> I, ooh, no dodge either, wow, this herbalist can shoot, she can actually shoot, but... Oh, I'm guard broken. Oh, I, I wanted to guard to make it so he wouldn't stress himself out. Well, I guess I'll just guard the Orbals instead. That is actually really annoying that that happens. I wanted to guard the, the Bounty Hunter so he wouldn't go afflicted and also wouldn't take too much more stress and all that, but please miss. And there we go, the 30 dodge from guarding and my opponent surrenders. <laughs> what is up with people surrendering prematurely these days? Well, what's their hit chance? They had snuff, right? They had snuff on their armor, so their hit chance will just slightly reduce, but it looks like the Houndmaster WD stands victorious, and let's head straight into a round number two. Well, 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 it would appear that the buffoon is flummoxed, and here we go, straight into a rematch once more against Zalfina, and it looks like they have a very similar team, once again, no redeem on this flashlight, also no punish, but this crusader is a chonky man, 55 prot, numbing incense, pit fighter's helm, Jesus, man at arms, numbing incense, protector, skite, chonky, antiquarian, not chonky whatsoever, really juicy target, really juicy target for me to just pull and then uh, kind of try and abuse here so i'm definitely gonna be gonna be going for that right now i'm gonna go for pull on the anti and she's probably just going to take cover here or the man at arms is gonna guard or the no the flagellant can't use the suffer here i don't think suffering with the flagellant is that good of a move because then i get a stun on the anti which is your most valuable character so my opponent really doesn't want to go for that it's very odd if they do and yeah they just take cover here that's what i would uh, that's what i would do myself but this looks to be three very defensive characters with one very aggressive minded character this character just anti with material passes can pretty much shred my entire team in like three turns if she gets a few festering papers especially if she gets a crit or two it's just game over on the spot now one thing that i do have on my side which is actually really freaking cool is that uh, I could push here? Ah, ah. 
I would stop selling this. Holy Lance kind of sucks at the moment. Yeah, I, I'm gonna push here. One thing I do have in my advantage is that the Houndmaster is here to do a few things. One of them is to mark, and his mark is actually really freaking good. It is so underrated. The target whistle has a nice accuracy base of 120, which is more than enough for what it needs to do, which is marking the prod characters. And with its mark, it does 4 rounds of mark, and it applies that debuff for minus 30 prod for 4 rounds with a 120% base debuff chance, meaning that you don't even need to bring a debuff chance trinket, you can still play your Houndmaster with the trinkets that you need to actually make mark Houndmaster work, and your mark will still be just as good. So it looks like my opponent goes for the reclaim on the Crusader, fearing his demise. And what I will do here is either marking the Crusader or shooting him, which I'm not too sure of, or I could just mark the Man at Arms and try to shoot him, but he might, he might unironically just move forward here. I think that is a possibility. I think he might just move forward. Guarding, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> Doesn't even think twice, just moves forward immediately. That's actually hilarious, man. That's actually hilarious that he didn't even think twice, he just did it. Yeah, that's too funny. Well, in that, in that case, um, I think just focusing the Crusader down here a bit is going to be good. Oh, and I still get rewarded with a crit 19. <laughs> oh, that's just wonderful. Two crits onto that poor little Crusader. Well, it is unfortunate for, for my opponent, but the reason I'm really looking to focus this Crusader down and why I'm fine dropping a sniper shot on him is that this Flagellant's purpose is to die. He wants to die, just like every other Flagellant, but this one wants it especially because he doesn't have Punish for the end of the match, so he needs to sacrifice himself to keep his other characters alive. Uh, or else, you know, things aren't gonna turn out um, too well for Salvinus team here, so he's pretty much trying to put the Flagellant in the line of fire every single time, that's a, that's a possibility. So I need to stop that from happening, right? It's what I need to do. So here I could go for a mark, but that is my finishing character, so that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't be the wisest thing ever. I want to keep my abomination turn just before this uh, uh, this anti-grain click, so I'm going to be doing that. I could drop a caltrips here, which would help a tiny bit, I guess. Um, yeah, let's let's caltrips. I mean, every game caltrips. Every game, regardless of the situation, always drop caltrips. This is the move I have to go for. The reason I go for this move, honestly, is because I want to keep my other moves. This one has to stay. This one kind of has to stay, and I have to choose between these two characters because uh, I need the Arbol turn to to shoot into a mark. If she doesn't shoot into a mark with all this protection. It's probably gonna tickle. Uh, the Hound Master turn, you know, I don't really care, I just want to mark someone, shoot them, and I really need, once again, to keep the Abomination turn to stun the Antiquarian, or force my opponent to click the Crusader and move forward. If they do that, I should still be okay here. They actually get rid of the Guard Break with that heal, which does make sense, but now I could just mark... Oh, they, they also get rid of the Minus Prot over there on the Men Arm, so that's actually really smart. One thing I could do here, though, is I could wait out my opponent's turn, but I don't have my finisher character available anymore, so that's a bit unfortunate. I guess I could just mark the... Um, uh, could just mark the flash one to try to focus them down. That is a possibility here, but I don't get to go first, so I'm just going to mark a Crusader, honestly. Yeah, he's just he's just going to go for the for the sopper. I know that's what's going to happen, and that is unfortunate, but it's just something i got to deal with. Yeah, you can't guard right now. <laughs> you can't guard, you've already used your MAA turn. I can't remember what you used it on, but was it uh, Dvelin? Was it the bell? No, definitely not a bell. I haven't s taken a single point of damage or stress, and I might still lose this match. It's crazy how it works. I haven't taken a single point of uh, offense, but I might still lose if I don't get a kill here. Because my opponent's team just wants to stabilize. They go for the protect me to give themselves brought, but you're still at not that much protection. You're only at 45 and I have a crit buff. I do 16 to 28, I don't even need a crit to get the kill, I just need a high roll. But thankfully enough, I do get the crit and my opponent might just lose the match right now, because I will de-transform and go for a Sonda Crusader. I highly disagree with that move from the Protect Me. Like, it makes sense, but you have to understand that you can't play this team the same way you'd play against any other Mark team. I have the the doggy guard in any other situation this crusader would have been unkillable there with 75 prod but in this specific situation not so much 
Now, my opponent gets rid of the mark there, and I will just go for the stun, and there we go, the 25 death row, and it's pretty much GG, because I've taken a grand total, and he surrenders again! I've taken a grand total of 9 stress, and I basically just deconstruct my opponent's defensive team once more, taking the W with the doggy WD. Yeah, honestly, really nice team. This video is only at 10 minutes. I guess I have to go for another one then. Let's go for potentially another W with this epic team. Well, 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 it would appear that the buffoon is flummoxed, and this time I am not playing against Selfie, and I'm actually playing against a person that just has two dots on their name, and I can tell you already this... Whoa, Sanity Spain, <laughs> I can tell you already that this match is gonna be odd. So this is a darkest burn, I've played against this person before, I know those two dots, those two dots are very very common to me and they're not playing this as you normally would you know the, this team is called the septic, septic tank and it usually just brings dodge hound master and all that but this is an aggressive setup this is as aggressive as can be so it would it will be fun to see how this one turns out so they've already dropped the command box so i need to stop them now one thing that i do have going for me is that they don't have the material passes on that empty coin so i don't have to worry about her as much, but at the same time, she has Sanity's Bane and Finisher, so if my characters go afflicted like that, you know, if they just start taking 25 strats from one Harry, if that does happen, she will have a 75% chance of death blow on the first fetching papers. That's an AoE 75%. You do not want to deal with this. It also has boss damage, so uh, for once, Sanity's Bane might actually be viable here. It's just that my opponent. No, they do have the Crimson Hook, so they actually have a lot of stress dealt. Yeah, this is a rough one to be in. This is a really rough one to be in. I'm definitely not dropping the Caltrops here. I do not have time to drop the Caltrops. That is just not going to be a thing, let me tell you that much. I have to get rid of this Doggy. I don't think this opponent actually has... Yeah, it's, it's just a full-on aggression flash one, so they really don't have too, much, too many ways of dealing with this. And now I'm just hoping that I can take this Doggy out. I need either a crit or a really high roll into my Arbalest. So let's see what I get. If I get... If I get a crit, it's just GG for this dog, which is actually really freaking good. That's minus one character at round one. This is something that WD can't do, actually. This is something that is only going to happen with your double mark, uh, with your double mark, uh, mark teams, or with your, um, uh, what do you call them, or your Halo comps, where you have to gesture to finish and you have a bounty hunter to mark anyway. It's not often that it happens, your opponent needs to not have any defensive options, but I mean, look at the trade. My opponent has dealt a decent amount of DOT to my characters, and I've pretty much done, you know, just one kill, so that's minus one on their side, but they've made a trade here, they made a trade deal, and I wonder if it was the best trade deal they could have gone for. So in this situation, I actually want to focus the flash one down. I know that sounds silly, I know that sounds stupid but this is a guard break debuff you can't guard it you can't heal it and this team the septic tank usually does very well because it has a defensively minded flagellant defensively minded doggy defensively minded random arms and defensively minded antiquarian but this one literally can't handle my pressure there is nothing it can do apart from just probably just losing another character round two it's a fun fact it might still win it might still win believe it or not i've seen it happen i've seen the antiquarian men at arms duo just take it but i will say it was quite a different situation the situation that it was in was basically just an abomination being able to transform and do a lot of horror and then the antiquarian had two double two dodge trinkets the men at arms had pit fighter summoned eui so he was able to just spam really good balance Wild, um, uh, what do you call it? While the anti current is able to dodge pretty much every single attack under, this, under the sun. So you might wonder, Shep, why did you go for the Hounds area there instead of the finish him? Well, I wanted the potential death blow with the 42%, but since that didn't happen, I can just go for the finish him now and not get rolled by the RNG by just failing a 95% death blow. I also could have saved my Mounty Hunter turn there by just going for the 25%, and honestly, I don't feel like I need to mark at that specific moment. So this is the, probably the best thing I can do. And I must say, this team is looking really freaking good. It seems looking better than WT at the moment, <laughs> if that's even possible which it might look like it. I mean, I am on the verge of collapse here, so uh, I really need to, to kill these two characters soon because my characters are about to start dropping to this sword. They're about to start becoming afflicted. And this Epicurean is going to wrap it all up very, very quickly. May let me tell you that much. Now, one of the things I can do here is actually just take the Epicurean out and then it's GG. So I'm going to try to do it here. I have to go for the target whistle. Well, you don't pull here. Do not pull here. You go for the target whistle. You go for the shot and... 
then you go for the pull. Why is that? Because this character has kind of a better death blow chance, and also going for the Kamikander now is just going to be overall better. So I think this is, this is a much better move. I could also go for the kill with the cow troops. That is a possibility. Uh, no, don't go for the kill with the cow troops. You go for the kill with the Kamikander, because if she drops to take cover, I will still have to get the kill either way. And if I don't get it to a cow troops, I'll get it to the Hound Sammy. She's a goner. None of my characters are at this store yet. <laughs> they're about to they're about to drop to this store, and yep, yeah, there goes the take cover, as expected. And do I do damage? I probably do. Yeah, I mean, she's marked, and I have uh, plus damage versus marked, and she has zero prod, so I should still do damage here. There we go, the death blow. And as of round four, it is a 1v4, and another surrender from my opponent side. And the Unmaster WD takes three quick and efficient wins. Really, really quick and efficient wins, actually. This team looks so good. I don't get it. How is this team so good? What are its weaknesses? Well, the, probably the biggest weakness with this team is if your opponent just has a lot of heals. But I saw that in the first match and it didn't really work out too well for them, did it? Not really. I think this team's biggest weakness is if your opponent just has a good balance on their team and is able to kind of just abuse my doggy for being a very squishy character. You need to kill this doggy. He just he just has way too much with the target whistle and with the Hounsari and the finisher. There's just too much going on. This this ability is so broken because no matter how much protection you have, no matter how, ma how many big heals you have, the target whistle plus the Arbos Piercing Quarrel makes it so you cannot use protection as a defensive ability. No team in the Butcher Circuit can the can withstand against the, against the pressure of something like this if they are just trying to win it through prot if they have an overwhelming amount of heals then maybe they can do it but that's that really is uh, that really is the only way when it comes to to the defense right and of course Yarbos is going to get crit so she's going to do even more damage even if you survive the first hit miraculously but anyway hope you all enjoyed today's video hope you all try out this team with the small doggy and the bigger doggy there is justice in this world at least for this video and i'll see you again another